you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This is a press release written like a news story. Well, I'm letting you know it's a press release, not a news story. Are you with me? Sounds like a news story isn't. It's to promote uh, it's to promote some legal company. They hope you won't know it's a fake news story that I mean the information contained within may be accurate. But they want it to look like news. I feel like the guy in the Fox News room, for God's sake. You know, it's one thing to uh it's one thing to say you've got news, another thing to cough it up. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> kind of like what I'm about to do to you now. Uh, we'll have more on that as it becomes available. Uh, would you sign, says the press release, a prenuptial agreement? Before you say, I do, a new survey by the sponsor of this phony news story, which is actually a press release, Thomas Thompson West, what they call themselves, it does not use quotation marks or anything, it looks like a news story. It says here, a leading legal information solutions provider. Anyone verified the veracity of that? No, and that's because it's a press release. The new survey finds that Americans are evenly split on the issue, but are open to at least considering a prenup. 41% of Americans say they might sign a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement if their spouse or partner asked them to. An equal percentage, 41%, say they likely would not sign an agreement. 18% said they weren't sure what they would do in such a situation. The press release goes on to say men are more willing than women to sign a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement. Well, of course that's true. Men have more to lose. 44% of men said they would definitely sign or probably sign, while only 38% of women said they would. But with half of all marriages ending in divorce, the majority of Americans appear to be willing to at least consider the idea of a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement. Only 20% of those surveyed said they definitely would not sign a prenup or a postnup. It says here that while many people associate these agreements with the rich and famous, legal experts say there are many situations where such an agreement may be prudent, including situations involving family-owned businesses, and marriages where one or both spouses have children from previous marriages. I think every marriage would be prudent. If you have to get married, if the gun is to your head and you see, you feel you have no other way out, make your son a prenup that says she'll get essentially nothing in a divorce, as little as you get away with. And if she doesn't like it, then uh, that's the beauty part. She'll leave. <laughs> perfect crime. The perfect crime. If you make me sign that, I'm going to leave. You are? Then go. <laughs> Yes. The survey found that when asked if they would sign a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement, American adults said yes, definitely 14%. Yes, maybe 27%. So that's a total of 41%. No, probably not 21%. No, definitely not 20%. 
I'll probably never meet somebody this attractive again. 6%. <laughs> Not sure. 18%. There you go. So um, it appears that more and more people are open to the idea of signing a prenup. I, I say if you have to get married, why would you trust a judge? Why would you trust her divorce attorney? Make her sign a prenup. This is a great way to find out whether you even ought to be getting married at all. Much less getting married to her. Doesn't that make sense? Like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever, and then it occurred to me why. There's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just gotta find them and make it happen. Right? Why waste the time on one girl? It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Yeah, more and more Americans now are open to a prenup. Why wouldn't you get one, for God's sake? It's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you doing this evening, buddy? I'm doing great. Great. It's a pleasure to talk to you, as always. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for doing the Lord's work and being an advocate for us men out there. You are truly the professor, and I thank you for your service. I would uh, like to comment about the uh, topic on prenup agreements. I called on this subject about a couple of months ago. I was a victim of a divorce about seven years ago, and even though I'm financially set now, I have my own home and everything is great, I am still hounded to this day by collection agents, by creditors that are contacting me, trying to get me to pay debts that were incurred by my former wife. The reason this is the case, and a lot of men need to listen to this, is because if you get married in a community property state, in which case I was married in one of them, it does not matter where you move after the fact. If you eventually get divorced, a creditor, depending upon the jurisdiction where you live, can actually come after you and sue you or try to collect debts that your ex-wife incurred even if they were in her name alone and I have to say this to the men because luckily for me I haven't been sued yet but I know that there are a lot of other men out there that have fallen victim to this and you absolutely absolutely if you get married nowadays it is essential that you get a prenup as a matter of fact uh, Susie Orman who's a very respected financial analyst said that if she had the power to make it a law she would mandate that everyone gets a prenup and I absolutely agree 1000% with everything that you're saying well uh, I totally agree with that I do believe that uh, Susie Orman is right in that particular case uh, they make you get a driver's license they make you get a marriage license exactly uh, you should have to go to a licensed attorney and uh, work out at least the basics of a prenuptial agreement Exactly, because just like you said a couple of uh, times, many of times I've listened to your show, when you get married to someone, essentially it's like establishing a corporation. What you're basically saying is, here are the keys to my company, here's half of everything that I own, and I, I personally will not be getting married anytime soon, if ever, because I'm happy with my life. I've uh, been able to prosper thanks to the advice that you've given. I've been a long-time listener, and once again, I want to thank you for doing the Lord's work. You keep up the good work, and please do me the pleasure of taking me out Compton style. Here you go, baby. Yes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Alfonso on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Long-time long listener, first-time caller. Man, I've been trying to get a hold of you for the longest. Mm -hmm. Here we one are. Of, one of my questions is, I've been, I've been married for only, in July, it'll be one year. But I've been with the mother of my kids for... 18 years. We just got married uh, back in May. In May will be another, a big year. And I, just a question, I bought my house two years ago. In July will be two years. The house, when I bought it, I bought it under, it's under my name, my mom and my dad's name. For whatever reason, something ever happened down the line, would my wife be able to take my house away? I'm not an attorney. Oh, okay. 
I thought maybe you had some kind of well, but, uh, the box. Because I'm not an attorney, I'm really not supposed to answer a question like that. Now, oh, okay. Not if, a problem. If you bought, did you buy the house, be you said, before you got married? Yes. That's, that was my thing. Well, some people say, oh, she could take it anyways. And I get some people well, say, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, my exp I'm just going to tell you what my experience has been. Even though I have owned houses before I got married, my attorneys recommended that I get my wife to sign something called a quit claim deed. Do you know what that is? No, you know, I'm not aware of that. All right. Now, your attorney will know what a quit claim deed is. And it's a piece of paper that said, I'm Mrs. Alfonso, and uh, even though I might have a right to uh, try to challenge and uh, take this house, that I uh, promise I won't do it. Okay. That's something, well, you know what, I've been with her. I'm happily married one year. I have no problems. She's, i got a 17-year-old son and my little girl, 9-year-old, so I, I can't complain, you know. She's been a good wife to me for this last year, but, you know, I can't complain, so... But she could also take half of what you have. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. My house. And anything else you have. Yeah, I know. Anything else you have. Yep. Okay, Tom, thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> Taking out any style you want, Tom. Here you go. I'm always amazed when guys like that call in. Here's a guy. He had his uh, cake and he was eating it, too. I mean... Here he was having he wanted to have kids, I guess. He's having kids with this chick. He lives with her, but he does not. Not married to her. He's not obligated to pay her bills, anything like that. Then he goes and gets married. No prenup, nothing. And what are you doing? What are you doing? He was afraid to hear any more from me. He was running from the phone. <laughs> I don't get it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Do you have a prenup? Do you have the balls to tell somebody that you want a prenup? Are you a man or a mouse? 1-800-5800-866. This is John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, I just had a quick question for you. Um, I'm very uneducated on the subject of marriage, and I just wanted to know, what is a prenup? A prenuptial agreement is a contract that you sign before you get married okay. that outlines who owns what in the event of a divorce. It can prevent you having to pay alimony. Mm -hmm. It can prevent you from having to share everything you have in a divorce. Like, right. let's say you become a doctor and you've got a medical practice. Are you aware that if you, if you go into the practice of medicine while you're married, it's a corporation that your wife owns 50% of, unless you specifically write a contract that says she doesn't own it? Uh -huh. Okay. So it, uh, it spells out what uh, she would and would not get in the event of a divorce. And you can have it say anything you want. I've had prenups in the past. I said, point blank, I will never pay alimony. Okay. Under any circumstances, and it said, I will not uh, engage in community property. What's mine is mine, what's yours is yours. All right. So what do you think of that idea? Um, I think I'm going to get one because I don't want to pay anything to, you know, somebody who's trying to steal everything from me. I, I you know? See, the best way to avoid that is to not get married at all. Yeah. I mean, why I even chance it? Because there are women who try to take prenuptial agreements to court, try to overturn them. Less and uh -huh. less of them are succeeding, but uh, you know, who even wants to take that risk? Yeah, and a post-nup is the same exact thing, except after the divorce has been filed. Well, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Um, I've heard, I heard you say prenup and postnup. What is, is a postnup the same thing? Well, a postnup is a is the same contract signed after you're married, but I'm not so sure how good those are since you're already married. Yeah, I I wouldn't want to wait till then. If you know, that's for guys who didn't have the balls to get the job done before they got married. Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to know, Tom. John, is your plan out? is your plan to get married? What's that? Are you planning on getting married at some point? At some point, yes. Why? Well, because I just figured it's something it's something that I can do to raise a family because I do have I do want to have kids, but I don't want, you know, somebody taking everything I have. Yeah, so but if you I'm get married, that's if you get married, that's what they can do. 
fact, yeah. it's very hard to avoid alimony if you get married to somebody and have kids with them. Uh, the best way to avoid alimony is not to marry the mother of your children. Okay. Then you just pay the child support and no alimony. Okay. Makes sense? All right. It makes sense. Thank you very much for your time, Tom. Thank you. He won't do it. Okay. Natalie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I was calling because my husband, he does very well. And uh, before we got married, I was the one that talked him into getting a prenup. So that means you have something you wanted to protect. No. I told him to do it for himself because I know if anything were to happen, that I would get half of everything that he's worked so hard for. That's unusual. That is unusual. Did your mother or your sister or your friends tell you you were crazy? No. No, I have a pretty level head. I'd have to say I have a pretty level head, and I look at this as a business, and... I make what I make, and uh, he makes what he makes. I don't want anything that he has and him the other way with me. What happens if, happens if you have children and you decide not to work? Oh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. I, can't, I can't not work. It does happen. Great for them. Not for me. I'd lose my mind. Mm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, not very common, Natalie. That's all I can say. It's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, long time, second time. Thank you, Scott. Tom, uh, one thing that I don't remember ever touching on is common law. I'm happily divorced, um, but I've always been curious about common law. You hear about, uh, you know, after seven years, uh, it's the same as you're married. That's a question for an attorney, uh, but what I've been told by attorneys is that there is no more common law marriage in California. That, that's Excellent. gone by the boards. Excellent. Excellent but, but, news. But uh, many attorneys at the same time are recommending a, a, an agreement like a prenup for people who are planning on cohabitating, a pre-cohabitation agreement. Okay, but if you're, if you're cohabitating and there's no common law, then, then you're still safe. No, because of palimony suits. Uh, can you explain that? Don't you remember Palimony? It goes all the way back to the 1970s when the actor Lee Marvin was living with a woman named Michelle Triola. And no, I don't know. She went around using his last name and passing herself off as his wife, and she really wasn't his wife. She was his uh, gal pal. Uh -huh. And anyway, uh, when he wanted to split up with her, she said, You owe me money. You promised to support me forever. And she took him to court, and that's where the term palimony was coined. Okay, so you're you're still not safe. I say if you if you're happy not being married, there's no reason to live with someone. Right. There is no reason, and I'm telling you as a happily living alone kind of guy, that you, you will be a lot happier doing it my way. All right, Tom. You can always All right. have company. You can always go visit her. You can always take vacations together. Oh, you're right. But you really don't want her telling you uh, where you put the doilies and where the pink stuff is going to go and where you can't have a flat screen TV and what you can drink and can't drink or smoke or not smoke in yeah. the house. Yeah, that doesn't happen anyway. Now, that's because you're not married yet. Right. All right, Tom. Well, I appreciate your help as usual. Thank you for that. Blow me up, please. There you go, baby. Casey, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Casey. Good. Tom, I recently started seeing somebody, and we've been kind of tossing the idea around about getting married. And this time, I am definitely doing the prenup. Now, first of all, tell me why you need to get married. To be honest with you, the tax break. Can I tell you something as someone who has a tax return the size of a small town phone book? Tell me. The amount it costs to support a woman is far more than any tax break you get. True. The t you can't look at a tax break in a vacuum. You have to look at the total cost 
the total amount of expenditures that you need to make in order to satisfy her and get your tax break. That's that's very true. It's, you know, the whole I am in love with her, and you know, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Doesn't mean you have to marry her. Mm -hmm. True, but she's one of those ones that, and I know better. I, I, I don't want to see for years. You've already gotten your ass kicked once. Yes, I did. Didn't you learn anything? I did. I learned that if I ever bloody do it again, I am going to get a prenup. Well, you see, now, I was once in your position uh, before um, marriage number three. <laughs> I said, if I ever do this again, I'm going to get a prenup. Then later on, after the prenup, and after I got all the threats to overturn the prenup, all the threats to explore with an attorney what rights she had, blah, 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 I realized the, 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 the safest thing to do is not to get married at all. Yeah, it, it is, but marriage is something that she, I mean, she really wants to be married. Well, fine, but, uh, you know, I really want lots of things. I'll bet you'd really like a Maserati. I, I really would. Are you going to get one? Probably not. Why not? Because I can't afford a Maserati. Right, and you can't afford to get married either. You're probably right, Tom. The things that you want that you can't afford, you don't get. That's true. Okay, now you got me thinking about this. <laughs> right. But if I happen to do it, I, I do want to thank you because you have taught me uh, I've listened to Like It's One on One religiously for years, and I try to follow it. Try. But I definitely will get a prenup. Yeah, but if you're trying to follow it, you would be getting married. I, I didn't say I'm perfect. I'm not the perfect student. But getting married is a major violation. I know. I mean, I know, you don't need it. Kids. She doesn't have kids, and she can't have kids, and I can't have kids. So well, then I, 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 all, you know what? Yeah, if you said to me, I want my kids to live in a stable household, I want them all to have the same last name, I know it's not good for me, but I'm putting my kids first ahead of me, um, I would say, well, at least you know why you're doing it, what you're doing, you have a reason for doing it. You, you get, The two of you don't even want to have kids. That's true. There's no reason left to do this. Okay, you got me thinking. I'll have to sit down and definitely think about this now, Tom. Thank you. Don't be uh, proposing or anything. No, I won't. Tom, can you take me out of old school? I certainly can. 1-800-529-5555. That's our telephone number. It's Barry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. I'm glad to hear that. Very I'm perfect. An attorney, and I'd love to respond to some of the questions regarding prenups and uh, common law marriages, which, as you pointed out, do not exist in California anymore. They did at one time, as I oh, understand. They, they did long before my father was born. There we go. So let but me. Beyond, but, but, beyond but, that, but there are just, there are women now, though, trying to take men to court after they've lived with them for years, claiming something called palimony. Yes, and you can thank uh, Marvin Mitchelson for that. There we go. But the reality is that that's very, very hard to prove and very, very hard to take money from. Right, but but uh, but as you know, ideal. but as you know, Barry, and again, I, you're welcome to get in my face and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, a woman who says, "Well, I'm going to go and I'm going to go see what I can do. I'm going to see what my rights are." If a woman takes you to court. Uh, you, you know, it can be many, many billable hours before we find out how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Yes. And if she decides she wants to challenge uh, the situation and say, I'm entitled to something because I've lived with you all these years, the fact that it's very difficult to prove, the man will probably end up paying for both lawyers, and then, then he finds out that he was right, but he has spent thousands of dollars finding out. Yeah, but the reality is that if you have a, a cohabitation agreement, or a prenuptial agreement. We're living in America, God bless us. Anyone can go to court for any reason and sue anyone for anything. And the reality is that the woman can challenge any of those agreements if it's not to her advantage, and she'll still go to court and spend lots of money. I mean, we talked today about a man in Erie, Pennsylvania, who is actually appealing this up the ladder. And a lower court said that his prenup could be overturned because he had given her an engagement ring made out of cubic zirconia. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but prenups can be overturned. Uh, the prenup can contemplate one thing and you decide to change your mind later. 
and that's a basis for eliminating or wiping out portions of, if not the entire prism. Uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. Prenups are not rock bottom. Postnups are even worse because the consideration of the marriage has already been paid, so that's out. So that leaves uh, nothing. You have to have a reason in today's market to get married in the first place. Yeah. And otherwise, otherwise, for guys who fortunately are the ones who make the most money, I mean, except we're living in Los Angeles, we're living in, in you know Hollywood, and there are lots of women who have more money than men. When um, and, and this is interesting, also, when a man of means comes into your office and says he wants to get married, do you have a blanket recommendation to him, like don't do it? Oh, absolutely. When uh, I I counsel people twofold. First, before you get married. Don't do it. There's no reason to. I mean, either she loves you and will live with you. We both can cohabit together uh, on into the you know on into nightfall, or it's it's not worth it because look at this, look at the divorce statistics, especially in California. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I know which side of the fence I'm betting on. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, Barry. I hope these guys are listening. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today because years ago I thought you were the seat of Satan and, uh, and I've come around. It's the Tom Like It Show. <laughs> the Tom Like It Show from Hollywood, California. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, the, what, what will get it out of your head is if you really, really love a guy and he tells you, uh, <laughs> look, uh, the only way we're staying together is unmarried. I would probably do that. I mean, it's just society beats that in your head since you're young about getting married and it's just could you could you dump the man you loved most ever that you ever dated could you dump him just because he wouldn't sign a contract to hand over half of everything he's ever earned i actually think that would be a good idea like to sign a prenup if i ever did want to their cohabitation thing if i ever wanted to live with them i, I mean I, for me i tell guys don't even live with women but how would you live the rest of your life that way? I mean, if you want to be with someone forever, so, wouldn't it just be more I can be, with, I, I, I can be with someone forever. I don't need a piece of paper. But not the marriage thing, but like living together. Isn't it just convenient? Well, how is it convenient? That they're there. You don't have to No. I, you know what? Here's what's wrong with it. As much as you say it's convenient, here's the part that's a little too convenient. Right now... You only see him when you look your best, feel your best, want to have sex with him. Now what happens when he sees you looking messy, your pantyhose are hanging in his shower. Ew. Right? And on top of that, there are days you just don't feel like having sex and he's now going to find that out. That's true. Something he doesn't even know now. He just assumes you're always into it because every time you see him, you're into it. So it just keeps the fire or the mystery? Well, the point is, how about you just see each other when you want to? That's true. I mean, do you really need to get into those conversations? What are you thinking about? Nothing. You haven't said anything in an hour. So what? You're not very communicative. Well, I just want a little time alone. Why do you need time alone? Why do we get married for? Eh, 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 eh. I can write these scripts because I've been through every one of them. 
You come home from work, you never say anything to me. I know, I've been talking to people all day, I just need some quiet time. But I need to talk about my day. Well, that's fine, I just can't handle it right now. <laughs> oh my God, it's painful. Do you think people are more likely to What are you going to take out the garbage? I don't know, I'll get around to it. Well, when are you going to do it? I don't know, maybe not tonight. That garbage has to go out tonight. Why well, not want to take it out tonight? Well, fine. I'm going to bed. I'm going to sleep. Do whatever you want to do. Good night. I've had every one of these conversations. By the way, I live alone. My garbage goes out on time all the time. I don't need some broad couple to tell me when to take out the garbage. But I don't mind living with people because I live with my sister right now. Uh, the fact that you don't mind doing it doesn't mean that it's good for your relationship. Or it's good to have that kind of relationship. You're afraid to live alone. Very true. I grew up in a very big family, so... So you're afraid to live alone. So you'll live with your sister until the second you're moving out and moving into your new boyfriend's house. That's what you will do. Then you'll stay with them even if the relationship is bad because you're afraid to live alone. How do I keep myself from doing that? How do you keep yourself from doing that? My recommendation is that you swallow hard and you get yourself an apartment. And promise you're going to live alone for at least a year. And get used to the idea that there are noises at night, cars that drive by, people who yell at each other. Things happen at night. And don't be calling people to come over and rescue you. Sounds like me. I, I got you pegged here. You seem to peg everyone. Darling, because I've been through it all. I've done all this stuff. <laughs> I know how it works. Ugh. I had a woman, when I was going to break up with one particular woman I was living with, she said, you'll never be able to take care of this house without me. Now imagine that. Imagine if I had stayed with her. Because I wouldn't be able to take care of the house without her. Not because of love or because of passion or because of caring. But because I wouldn't be able to take care of the house without her. Imagine if I, if I took her advice seriously. And stayed with her. Now look at you. If you got with a guy, it wouldn't even necessarily be because of love, but simply because you don't want to live alone. You still there? That uh, was pretty profound, I think, for her to handle. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. John of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Excellent. So, uh, as I'm sure you know, I'm uh, 26. I'm getting. Why married. did you say, as you're sure I, uh, as you're sure I know? How do you know I know anything about you? Well, I mean, <laughs> your screener did a pretty good job of asking. Well, me that, then, I, you know what? I'll ask him what you called about. Thanks for calling. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, I'm sure Dean has the whole story for me. Hey, Dean, come on in here a second. Let me get Dean in here. Dean, uh, this caller I just talked to said that uh, you knew everything about what he was going to say. What was he yeah. going to talk about on the air? Yeah, John called in. Uh, he is 26 years old, and at currently he doesn't have anything to show uh, as far as assets and so forth. So he wanted to know if it's okay for him to get a prenup or if it's up his alley to get a prenup, even though well, he has nothing. And you two had a conversation about that? Well, I briefly Q and A'd him, and uh, yeah. he answered my question sufficiently. I felt he was good enough to go on the air, and then when the mini got on the air, he was a dumbass. Right. I just wanted to check and see because uh, if you can tell me what he talked about, why do I need to talk to him? That's true. So a reminder to people who call in: don't ever say "as you already know" or "as I told your screener" or "Dean and I already had that conversation." Because when you do, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask Dean to tell me what you said. When you call in, you are to pretend you never had the conversation with Dean, even though you did. As I always say, if you ever watch one of those late night shows like Letterman or Kimmel or The Tonight Show or whatever, 
Uh, you know, when, uh, I don't know, did any big names win, a, win an Oscar last night? Anybody we ever heard of? No, I don't think so. All right, let's take some big name actor. Uh, Owen Wilson, when he's not slitting his wrists or whatever, when he comes on a TV show. Now, now, before he goes on the show, they do what's called a pre-interview. It's kind of like the TV version of screening. They do a pre-interview. So Owen Wilson sits down, and they say, is there anything you don't want to talk about? And they'll say, well, tell Jay not to bring up my suicide attempt. And they say, okay, fine. And so, uh, are there anything else you don't want me to talk about? Well, don't ask about any treatment programs I might be in or any of my personal problems. Okay, fine. So what can we ask you about? Oh, I don't know. Well, uh, how about, uh, you got any interesting hobbies? Oh, yeah, yeah, I like to play poker. Okay, can Jay ask you about poker? Yeah. So then, when the show starts, he said, my guest is Owen Wilson. Hey, uh, I hear you like to play poker. He, Owen doesn't sit there and say, well, as I said in the pre-interview to your producer, as I was saying backstage to the guy who asked me all those questions, he answers the question as if he's never heard the question before. But in, in reality, he's already been asked the question. They already know what the answer is going to be. Jay's got little blue cards in front of him that tell him the question and the answer before he asks the question. Now, Jay doesn't sit there and go, okay, they, I wrote this question down here for me, and they told me that in the pre-interview you said, no, he asked the question like it's fresh. Like he never, ever thought of asking this question before. His buddy, uh, the Owen Wilson, is on the show, and he's just going to ask him a question. They don't talk about how sausage is made. Owen Wilson doesn't come out and go, all right, well, I had to drive down to the studio here at Burbank. I had to park my car back out there on uh, Alameda. And there was no park. I had to park across the street over there on Buena Vista. And I had to walk over here today. And I came in. I had to sit down and go through this pre-interview. And they sat me in there. I had to wait behind all these other people who were being pre-interviewed. I don't know what was going on there. And I finally got in there and I sat down. They asked me a bunch of questions. They don't go through all that. It looks like these two are just two old buddies getting together and having just a chit chat over the back fence in front of six million people. So when you call a radio show, don't be calling in and say, "Well, as as you know, I, your screener can tell you we 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 already talked about that." It's like it's so uncool, so so unprofessional. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, sir. Dick, go back to work now. <laughs> One eight hundred. I I hope people learn something from that. And I don't know if Owen Wilson's into poker. I'm just making something up. Suicide attempts. We know he's into, but uh, I don't know about poker. Uh Rashonda on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. What did so you say? You can... What did you say to the screener? Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm I'm so glad you can say dumbass because the guy that called in while ago about. Uh... <laughs> I don't want a tax break to get married. If he would tell his wife or the future wife those things, she wouldn't want to marry him in the first place. I do believe that everybody should get a prenup because if women would grow some balls and these men would grow some balls, they'd realize that women can do this crap on their own. They don't need to fall back on other people's money. Oh, I married him and I lived with him for 10 years. Have some self-respect for yourself and totally try to do it on your own. Don't As opposed to having self-respect for others. Well, I mean, they shouldn't get married in the first place. This guy for a tax break, what is he doing trying to get married in the first place? If he had the balls to say it to his girlfriend, I had to call the Tom Leica show to see if I should get married. He has no business getting married in the first place. Words to live by, darling. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Leica Show.